I'm going live with this pricing calculator I've built over the last month or two. It should be live right in the description below, but this video will cover the last bit of the implementation, which means putting it up on a real virtual private server running Node.js in an instance where we can access the API live online and integrate that into EditorX so we can finally put this whole thing together. Let's get started. Here we have the last instance of the pricing calculator inside of Node.js. This one here, we just need to update on GitHub to make sure that all the changes are available before we push this out to a live server. What I'm going to do is sync it over here and then open it up in GitHub. What I want to do is pull in the URL so I can clone this project. And I want to clone this on a live server that I have running using Ubuntu so that it can always stay online. I actually have a server like this, a Linux server up in the cloud. And this one here, I've just logged into earlier. To log into this, you would just need to set up your own VPS server. And you can do this in a number of platforms. With this one here, I can log in and I can now clone the project. To clone the project, I'm going to run git space clone and then paste in the URL. Just need to make sure that I actually copy that URL across to the clipboard. And let's just run this command one more time. Once we do this, it'll clone the repository and actually anyone can do this if you want to try this out on your own system to see how this pricing calculator works. And now we'll have the folder with all the content in there. We can actually browse into that folder using CD. So let's actually do that and we can see that the files are in here. Now, if we want to actually run this project, we can't just simply node run it because we haven't actually installed any of the dependencies. Normally you would do an NPM install to do this, but I didn't particularly create a package when I originally created this. I actually should do that next, but for the now I'm just going to install the dependencies for Express as well as cores just in here so that we can use. With that done, we should be able to now launch the project and test it out. If this is the first time you're using Ubuntu, the simple way to do this is simply run node plus index.js and this will launch up the project. It's currently running on port 3000 locally inside of this VPS. So to access it, we would need to pull up a browser and go to the direct IP address since it doesn't actually have an IP yet. Currently, however, I'm hosting a few web servers on here and this running on port 3000 isn't particularly working. And there's a few reasons for this. It could just be the firewall blocking port 3000 and there's multiple firewalls normally happening, such as on Ubuntu, you have UFW and you can check the status of that by writing UFW space status or sudo UFW space status and this shows you which ports are open and closed. Here, I've only got port 80, 443, and a couple of others open, so I'm going to add port 3000 to be open by passing in UFW space add space 3000. In an ideal world, this would have worked, but there could be additional firewalls happening on the server provider, and this is where my trusty NORC system, or N-G-R-O-K, comes into play. I'm going to install this on this Linux server, and this will actually allow me to do some port forwarding directly to a domain name, which we can use for hosting this, just like we did for the local server. First, I'm going to install this so that we can use it as part of this VPS. I've also configured it, but that is a secret anonymous code, which I don't want to paste on here. And now we should be ready to go and utilize it. I want it running in the background. So this is where I'm going to pass in NORC, HTTP being the port I want to access it on, 3000 being the port I want it to listen to. And I'm going to log this out so it can run in the background. This application log will give me some additional details here, such as the domain name that we'll be able to access this API on, and it'll be running in the background. It's not currently running though right now. It's simply just forwarding. So I'm going to run node index.js, and this will start listening on port 3000. To do all this, I did actually use Stack Overflow a little bit, but on top of that, we can now test out if this domain actually works. So let's actually copy this out and paste this into the browser to have a look. Now let's actually paste this just up here and we can see that the API is in fact running. We've got this first request coming up, which is perfect. The final part here is to make sure that this application always continues to run. To do this, I'm going to use Forever. Forever is an NPM package that you can install on your VPS and it basically makes sure that whatever service you're running will run indefinitely. If it, for example, crashes, it restarts. If, for example, your server shuts down, you can start it back up. 
So I'm going to pass in forever list. I currently don't have a list of any applications. I'm going to run forever space start space index.js and this will add it to the application list. Now it should be running in the background here as a process. We can do forever list to view that. We can see it is visible and we should be able to jump into the browser here as well to make sure that it is in fact running. And now we can be quite secure knowing that this server is now up and running for our pricing calculator and it's always going to be online on this address. Now it's time to jump into Editor X. We have a few other options here we're not yet using, and I'm gonna make these look disabled by setting the opacity here to 50%. This way people don't get confused and try to select them. For the hourly pricing, we've got the skill level, we have the website as well as finally the rate. And we're gonna put all of these together on a new page where we'll display the price. So I'm gonna create a brand new page here. And for this one, I think I'll call it the hourly total price or the hourly website price. And this page here, I'll also update the URL so it can navigate to this final page here as hourly-website-price. And we'll update this with this design over here that we had with Figma. Now to do this, I'm going to reuse the master that we previously had in our sections. Most of this is already styled in such a way that it's mobile responsive and I'm just going to adjust it a little bit so that it works with this new final page design. So I'll update some of the text here. Let's actually paste this here as the pricing calculation. Let's update some of these sections here. Since they don't actually use these elements, I'm gonna remove most of them and just resize this box here so it's much larger and we can fit all the content in. Now with this box here, it's currently docked a little bit uh, on the top, I suppose. I'm gonna center it and I think I'm gonna center most of the stuff in here. Let's remove the text here and add a new one here for the title. And this will be the price. I'm gonna dock it to the center and paste this in. I also want this to be much larger. So I'll do a heading one and I'll make it scale along with the size of the viewport. Great. The only other thing here that I probably want to do is have a subtext here to reference what this number is referring to. So this subtext will be the website cost. And I'm gonna center this and dock this again in the middle. Now, whenever you're docking stuff like this in the center, make sure you center the text as well. I forgot to do that here for the H1 block, so I'm just going to do that now. And we're going to dock this from the top left and the right. We'll add in the small description here as a paragraph just underneath. And then finally, I want to add in those elements that we have underneath. And these elements here are those, I suppose, items that we need to make some room for here uh, that basically showcase which options we've selected so that there's context as to the price of the website. Now I'm gonna add these in as containers and I'm gonna add the border radius of them around here. I think it's just under corners, make it 50 pixels so it's nice and curved. We'll update the background here so it's using that same dark blue background. I'll add the hex code for that here on the right hand side. And then I'm just gonna put in some text here inside of this container once we've docked it properly. So the very first option I selected earlier was the 10 to 20 hours. So I'm gonna paste that in here. I'm gonna make this text a little bit smaller, probably just paragraph text, but we will need to change the text so that it's a white color so that it's visible on this dark background. Originally, I thought to maybe adjust it to the left, but since we're centering everything, I might as well center this text as well, and I think that'll look better. Now we can just make sure that this item here is also docked properly inside of this container. I always like to dock things from the middle and the top, and now all I have to do is duplicate this option and copy it below. Great, so I'm just gonna paste these in, basically making some room for them. I'm gonna make sure that they're docked from the top, as always, because if you resize this panel, then they might, for example, resize the wrong way. And these are the final three options that we've selected in earlier screens. We'll also need a back button, which has a slightly different design. It's just a slightly lighter version. We'll probably have to move the box here that we have as a container down a little bit, but let's actually update the background color for this. And we'll add in basically a better looking text here, probably just black. And let's update the text here to be back to pricing calculator. So this is this page done in just a few minutes. Again, it shows how good Editor X can be, for example, if you need to make quick content like this, but now we have to plug this all into the API. So what I'll do is open it up and I'm going to go through some of the earlier code that I had and I'm gonna paste it into that final page here for the website size. 
Previously, this was doing the API test, but now I just wanted to store the value that we select. And we're gonna do the API request here on this final website pricing page. We're gonna pull in that URL and send users who are currently on that page straight to that final page. We'll cut out the rest of the code and we'll only run that on the final page here. And we'll run it immediately as the page loads. This means that we're gonna import all the libraries here and we're going to basically make sure that we're pulling out all the values that we're storing in local storage. This includes the time for the website, the website size and the hourly rate. Then what I'm gonna do is have this update the value here inside of this price. We'll need to give it an ID, which we can later reference and utilize to update inside of the fetch request. But for the time being, let's make sure all of this works with our new URL, which is running on our VPS in the background. One more modification I want to do is that after we get the data, we're not just console logging it out, we are going to update the value here that we have for this results page. We can do this by referencing w, the hash of the ID we're using, and passing in text equals json.price. Now, one thing to note here is that the fact that json.price is a number. So since it's a number, it's not gonna update that value. We need to turn it into a string. This is actually quite easy. It's the same as in JavaScript. You just add it in commas with a dollar sign curly brackets to reference the number, and that turns that number into a string. So now if we view this page, we can see that everything is successful. It's calling the API. It's getting a response here from the server, which is 375, and this has been updated on our page. We're just missing a dollar sign. So we can actually add this in. We'll add a dollar sign in before the text string, and this should update the text string with a dollar sign, as well as then the number for the price. Let's test this out, and if we hit preview, we can see there it is. All right, so now let's finish up this results page. And what I wanna do is update these values here by setting an ID for each one of them. And what we're doing here is we're storing values we selected earlier in local storage. Now I wanna present them on this results page. I'm gonna do a dollar sign with the hash of the ID of the element. I'm gonna do a dot text and I'm gonna update that text to equal the value we're pulling from local storage, which is already a string, so we don't have to stringify it. We're gonna do the same here for the other items we're pulling, such as the website size, as well as the hourly rate. And for each one of these, we're going to create the ID there for the text, and then we're going to update the text. This one here was made for the container and the, not the text, so I'm just going to change that and make sure that it's referencing the text element and not the container element. Great, so now we can see those are updated, but the last one isn't. And this is actually because we didn't start off at the very beginning here we actually started off halfway through the website with some pre-stored value. So let's actually try this from the beginning. We'll select the hourly pricing. We'll select 10 to 20 hours, select a single page and $25. And here we can see all those values have now been stored properly and they give us the price. This pricing calculator is now live for you to be able to access and play around with. It'll be in the link in the description. On top of that, if you want to have a look at all the code that went online on the VPS, then that's open source in terms of GitHub. I'll also add it in the description. If you want to have a look at the design aspects and if you want to have a look at the Figma file to build your own, you can do that too. I hope you guys enjoyed this series where we built out this pricing calculator and gave you some insights into some of the background of what goes into building structures like this. If you want to be involved or if you want to help me build out future features, let me know because I'll still be working on this in the background, adding more and more in the future. On top of that, I'll be looking at the next project to do. If you guys have suggestions, jump into this Discord and hit me up. Maybe send me a private message and I'll have a look. Maybe we can build something together. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.